Alleluia, Christ is risen. May his grace and peace be with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are made. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled that he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We're in the third Sunday of Easter. We have four more to go. So just rest and glory in the beauty of the resurrection and your forgiveness. Uh, happy Easter. Fun fact. This gospel reading was the gospel reading three years ago that was appointed for the day I was with your search committee in this space to preach and celebrate the Eucharist. Three years later, here we are. And I promise I'm not preaching the same sermon. I did look to see what I preached about though. And today I want to explore this passage in its fullness, this gospel passage in its fullness and start with the idea that God does not hold a grudge, but keeps pushing us forward. The story happens just after the walk to Emmaus, where the risen Lord appears as a traveler on the road to Cleopas and an unnamed disciple. And they don't know it's Jesus, but it is. And Jesus opens the scriptures up and shows them where he is in them. And then evening comes and these two disciples are so fascinated with this traveler, this guy who seems to know so much, that they say, stay with us, for evening is at hand. So this traveler, who they do not know is Jesus yet, stays for supper. And he takes bread, gives thanks, breaks it, and blesses it, begins to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and he vanishes. And these disciples say, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Today's story is an extension of this happening directly after this Emmaus story. Uh, except it is the ones, uh, it, it, it's, it's an extension of this, except it's with the ones he will appoint as apostles. The ones he sends out to the ends of the earth. In the gospel according to Luke, this is the first time any of the disciples have seen the resurrected Jesus. No doubt they were terrified on several fronts. One, because they have never seen anything like this. And two, because the last time they saw him was in the same room a few nights earlier as he washed their feet and they had their last supper together. The last time they saw Jesus, they had fallen asleep in the garden when they were supposed to be keeping watch. The last time they saw Jesus, one of them had betrayed him. One of them denied him three times. They either hid in total fear that day of the crucifixion or looked on anonymously in the crowd from a distance as their whole life crumbled before their eyes and they did nothing to try to stop it. Enter Jesus on the day of resurrection and all he says is, peace be with you. Essentially, you're forgiven. God does not hold a grudge. There's no blame, no shaming, no penance of any of them must do. Simply, peace be with you. Touch and see that it is really me. Do you have anything to eat? Even when Jesus is hungry, 
he does not hold a grudge. All jokes aside, what we have to remember is that it is extremely important that this really happened. That is, there needs to be physical evidence that Jesus is not a ghost. It is extremely important that Jesus' resurrection is not just a spiritual metaphor. There needs to be proof. We want proof. Here it is. Watch him eat a piece of broiled fish. At Emmaus, he had bread. Here, with the soon-to-be apostles, he has fish. Fish and loaves? Sound familiar? A ghost cannot eat bread and fish. Touch and see the scars on his hands and feet. A ghost does not have flesh and blood. And once again, we have to remember that the resurrection of Jesus is not just a spiritual idea. It is a physical reality. The gospel text says, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. God does not hold a grudge, but keeps pushing us forward because the mission is not complete. In some ways, yes, it is finished. We, it is accomplished. He has done the saving work that everyone needs to know about. It is now up to us, though, the church, his body. See there? His body. His resurrected body. His physical body. We are his body in the world with all our scars. And what is our task according to the gospel today? Our task is to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins. That is the task of the church. But we are often stuck hiding in that room, perhaps arguing, perhaps unsure about what we are to do or distracting ourselves with some kind of new gimmick, when in reality, the only thing that marks success in the church is whether or not God's forgiveness is shining through. God's forgiveness is being proclaimed. God's forgiveness is being accepted. If it's not about forgiveness, according to this gospel text, if it's not about forgiveness, then it is, about, then it is a distraction. The whole world must know the radical grace and forgiveness of God. That is the church's mission. In our catechism, uh, which is on page 855, of the prayer book. Uh, it's also called an outline of the faith. Uh, if you scroll down to the section called the church, one of the questions is what is the mission of the church? The answer they give us is that the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. Reconciliation, to restore us to right relationship, i.e. forgiveness. Peter is getting at this in the Acts of the Apostles today. He is leading the Israelites who are gathered around after a man is healed. He is using the sign and wonder to draw them in, to fulfill Christ's mission, to preach repentance and forgiveness of sins. You did this in your ignorance. Now come to the light and know that you are forgiven for doing this. Now go and preach forgiveness. For the church, that is all there is to do. It is not easy, and we often get distracted, but that is really all there is to do in one way or another. Forgiveness is all there is. Now on to Dolly Parton. 
Dolly Parton was the subject of a podcast in 2019 called Dolly Parton's America. And she, she experienced a sort of renaissance in the late 20 teens because her appeal transcended segments of our society that are often at war. Being wildly popular with both the religious political right and left. And in this podcast, the second episode is called Forgiveness. It describes the tumultuous relationship she had with Mr. Grand Ole Opry himself, Porter Wagner. Any of y'all remember Porter Wagner? Yeah, some of y'all are nodding your heads. Marking your age, that's all right. He in effect, Porter in effect, made Dolly's career by bringing her on as his second for his popular television program in 1966. And they were like two peas in a pod for a while, playing off of each other, but then people started liking her more than Porter, and he began to get jealous. When she later broke her contract and left the show to chart her own course, he sued her for damages. She settled, purchasing her freedom for $1 million. When asked about Porter, he, he, she said, he, he just did that out of anger. Later in his life, when Wagner hit serious financial trouble, Dolly bailed him out. She purchased his production company for half a million dollars and then gifted it back to him as a thank you for all he had done for her. When Porter died in 2007, Dolly was at his side expressing her love to him. At this point in the interview, the interview pr presses Dolly on why she would do that, all of that, for someone who was such a hard part of her life. She said, if it had not been for Porter, I may not be sitting right here in this chair right now. The interviewer then offers up his theory, explaining her transgenerational, transcultural attraction and says, one of the reasons you can have the crazy broad appeal that you have into so many different communities that normally hate each other, he suggests, is because of those acts of forgiveness. Does that vibe with you? She replies, yeah, but I, I forgiveness? Forgiveness is all there is. Forgiveness is all there is. In a sense, this is what Jesus is saying to his disciples in the gospel today. Forgiveness is all there is. It's that easy and it's that difficult. God does not hold a grudge and neither should we. Neither should the church. Forgiveness is all there is. Amen.
in this Easter tide, let us pray to the one who died and was raised, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, you exalted your Son as leader and Savior and raised him above all rule and authority. Give your faithful people courage to follow him in obedience to you wherever we are called to witness. Lord, in your mercy. As the disciples of Jesus ventured out at his word, so give us the faith to trust and obey his word in our lives as we pursue together the mission of the church, remembering the congregation and clergy of St. Paul's. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Andrew's, Goldsboro, and St. Paul's, Edenton. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, in New Zealand, and Polynesia. Lord, in your mercy. As the disciples of Jesus shared food with their Lord, so give us the generosity to share what we have with those in need. We pray for our Blessing Box ministry and all of our community ministries. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus offered peace and authority to his disciples, so strengthen all the clergy to preach the gospel and administer the sacraments with faithfulness and conviction, remembering Rob, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Lord, in your, in your mercy. Watch over the people of Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Gaza, and all who serve at home or overseas in the military or in mission or outreach work, and their families, especially Andrew Austin. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the blessings of this life. Lord, in your mercy, be present with all who are sick or in any need or trouble, especially Earl, Alice, Eileen, Dawn, Lloyd, Tammy, Dale, Alex, Lyle, Joanne, Al, Sib, Catherine, Renee, Carol, Janet, Spencer, Carla, Barbara, Vicki, Sandy, Bill, Nancy, Margaret, Bill, Bill and Pam, Lynn. Lord, in your mercy. Bring us at last with all the children of God who feast with Christ in eternal life. We remember those who have died, especially Barbara O'Leary. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning, St. Paul's. Welcome all who are with us today in person or online, especially if you are visiting with us, please join us for a reception following this service and on your way know that the source, our gift shop, is open for business. Uh, we are settling into Easter Tide, and the big news today, as you've seen on the e-news or in the back of your bulletin, that Dr. Bill is re-retiring. <laughs> You've read my note and Bill's note, and all I can say, all we can say, Bill, is thank you. Thank you. I will say we're not thanking you for re-retiring. We're thanking you for all your work. Uh, and you've, you'll, you'll, you, if you, you can read about that in, in, in my note. Uh, we look forward to having you in the pew and seeing that bow tie not hidden by, uh, by our, under a robe. And we'll be able to see that grin not just from the side but head on. And from time to time perhaps something like today will happen. When Brendan's away, you'll supply for us from time to time. So thank you again. Um, big place here on Sunday morning. It's a big place. And how do I get to know folks? Well, just like in college, when I went to a large university, I had to find a smaller community to become a part of. Here are just a few ways to get connected if you're feeling like you're not quite there yet as a newcomer. Uh, one is this Saturday we have our new crafters group, and that's crafters of all kinds uh, from 10 to 2. Uh, and we hope uh, perhaps you'll join us there. Or you can be a Thursday morning worker, AKA, if you've heard the word GNP, or gentle folk of noble poverty, uh, that, that they come together and they drink coffee and they uh, talk about all the things that they're gonna do, and then they do them. So we hope that you'll join us for that perhaps, or you, uh, they're actually getting ready for what we're calling a weed and feed on April 27th, that's Saturday, where we're gonna work together to beautify our grounds, and then we're going to feed you. So uh, the more and more info to come on that, or you can join the choir, uh, or you can come to the rector's Bible study on Thursday morning, or you can join a hospitality group, or you can come to Sunday school. The, the possibilities are, are limitless. So we hope that you know that there are ways to get connected here, uh, and please uh, contact me or Catherine or if you uh, would like to become more involved in the life of the church. Uh, coming up at St. Paul's, you'll see on page 11 what I like to call a QR code apocalypse. Um, it's, uh, there's just a, a small portion today here of all the various things because we had to have room for some other things. But I did want to let you know that we're having a beautification project survey. And Cecilia Pierce, where are you, Cecilia? Cecilia is uh, going to be in the parish hall, and she's going to be... Uh, she, she's going to be collecting some information from you if you'd like to participate in that. It's basically so that we can uh, apply for a grant in our community that will help us uh, fund uh, some beautification projects around the outside of the campus. So talk to Cecilia before she talks to you in the parish hall. Uh, special announcement uh, is that next Saturday, next Sunday in here at 9.30 a.m., uh, adult formation is, is not going to, going to be happening. Uh, we are going to be uh, revealing and talking about and announcing the capital campaign. The capital campaign. We hope you will join us in this space because the excitement is growing. We have lots to share with you. We will meet here next Saturday, next Sunday at 930 to reveal the plans and see what the new spaces will look like. We have renderings to show you. We will hear good news about the fund ref, fundraising efforts so far. And to top it all off, we will have coffee and light snacks. So we shall see you there. Please do join us for that special, special parish forum. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who is sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, 
to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. of God for the people of God.
through Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. in the name of Christ. <laughs> 